Well, Dave, thanks for joining us. Um, I should imagine you'll be glad when this is all over, right? Yeah, it's coming to an end now. It's a, like a three-day event, isn't it, um, with the record. So it's um, it's been great. It's been really nice. Um, it's nice. Obviously, it's been on the horizon for a while, so it's nice to actually get it done. And you know, more importantly, to have it done with, with two wins as well. So, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. Um, a bit humble. It make you stop and think about things, or have you just been concentrating on the games? Yeah, there's been moments when you sort of, you know, people ask you questions and you sort of almost forced to look back. So, you know, it's been nice in a way to sort of um, look over some of the games and some of the events that have happened over the last 20 years, which is, it's been good, but as in football is, you know, you can't, you can't stop, you can't look back for too long. It's all, all about the next game and especially over this Christmas period, you're sort of in a busy a busy period where you've got a game every two or three days and it's just sort of all focus on the next one, really. Is there a secret... Is there a, I know you like a certain sugar-free drink. I'm thinking of drinking a lot of that, seeing what you've achieved yeah, in 21 games. Um, but really, the mental motivation is the one that I find quite fascinating. You know, I, you know, I see you guys at the training ground and you're in early, and you're, like we were at the weekend at Morecambe, getting on very late, long journeys. Does that, does that not tire you? Is it, is it just part of the job? Is it something you enjoy? Do you enjoy that side of it? Yeah, it's it's part of it, and I've been been used to it. Obviously, family and football is what I've always known. Dad was on the same schedule and late nights and all that games on Tuesdays, games on Saturdays, in hotels, and um, you kind of get sort of uh, numb to those sort of side of the game. But it's just how you know your mental preparation. It's just um, I think just the gratitude of what the job that you have and. I love of the job, you know. It's not, mm. it's not a job, really. It's you know, I think it's a vocation. It's, it's something you would do if, if you wasn't paid. I would still be playing football for someone. You know, I'd, I'd always be playing football. So I just think myself very lucky that I've been to play so many games and, and do something that I love really, and, and and do it at such an amazing place. So just very thankful, very um, very lucky to do what I do, and obviously I enjoy it immensely, which is why. Why, why, why keep going? There is no a luck, isn't there? Because if you look back at the uh, yeah, history of Wimbledon, Stroke, MK Dons, um, yourself, uh, David Martin, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, it's not Jamie Mackey. I mean, if the chairman hadn't accepted, it, it, your whole career could have been really different. Wouldn't you? you weren't established players there. So there must be, a, you must owe a few bits of debts to people, but I suppose. I'm putting words in your mouth for it. I suppose one of the biggest that you got is that Pete actually came in and delivered them. Yeah. You know, got the club out of the trouble. Yeah, it's, I think, you know, as you said, I think there's, there is a large slice of it. You have to be put yourself in the right position and be in a position to take advantage of whatever comes your way and you have to be open and work hard for that. But I count myself lucky from my first Sunday League coach to to Mike the Gaffer now. Like, I've met some amazing people along the way. I've met the right coaches at the right time. Um, people that have just brought me on or brought out a different side to me and um, in that sense I've been really lucky in terms of the people I've worked with and even with the Wimbledon situation was that you know, making your debut is probably the hardest point of anyone's career making that breakthrough of getting that trust of playing a game and as you said you know, we were sort of on the verge of, of going out of existence and you know, as an 18 year old with no career to date trying to get into another club is Almost, you know, it's so hard as you know, every year there's 800, 600 players out of contract. It's, it's a really tough, tough situation. And I was lucky that I got my break um, and I, I, I took it, but I was lucky that as well that, you know, sometimes players come in and come out of the team because the squad's big. You know, we only had what was available and you almost played through the bad spots, which I think has made me stronger. But at the same time, given a different club, you might have come out and maybe not regained your place for another year or two so you know, I've been very fortunate along the way and you know, so much to so many people who have, have helped me along the way. Of course the league debut was with Wimbledon at Sheffield Wednesday wasn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah I remember it well. Yeah. <laughs> and then of course the MK Diamonds debut, Barnsley at home. You got any memories of that game? Uh, I remember, remember it being baking hot, I remember yeah. Yeah, it was really hot. Um, I remember it just been really different, really vibrant. I think we had those years at um, at Sellers where, you know, 600, 700 fans, it just felt like it was, 
you know, it was, it was just dying as, as it was. Um, then we had the, the bit in between where we were Wimbledon and Milton Keynes, which was, yeah. you know, it was great. It felt it was different and um, it felt new, but obviously that first game was another you know, white kit. The, the name had changed. It, it just felt, you know, almost like a new, a new, like, new beginning really. And uh, just the excitement of, of something new and, and uh, yeah, I think it was, the eyes were scored, I think it was a one-all draw, wasn't it? I think if yeah, I'm correct. Yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just, you know, an exciting time. You, you sort of knew it was on the, the start of, of something sort of thing, so. Yeah, they did bond, didn't it? Bonded the team and the fans, that period, and we were all looking yeah. forward, and everyone was looking forward, which is the only way, only way to be yeah. Um You played with some brilliant players, some marvellous players. Is it frustrating you a little bit that some of the, some of those players that were brought to the club who went on to reach great three things and some who were generated by the club did actually lead to Australia. I mean, if they'd all been a Dean Luton, we'd have a pretty good team now, wouldn't we? They might well, be a bit yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> we'd have the same, like, you know, Keith Andrews, you know, Denny Alley, you know, but, but it's part of football, I know, but yeah. it, 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 was it frustrating you or was you, especially Denny, was you just really pleased, pleased for him? Yeah, I mean, on a personal note, sometimes you have a good team and you lose two or three and you know what that means for the team, you know, you, you're not silly and you know that it has a detrimental effect and it has an effect on you because it's part of your team and, you know, you, you're now weaker because of them going. Um, and then there's a different kind of side where your teammates, you, you, you want everyone to do well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when Twine, you got his move and H, you know, you, you're really just excited for them because, yeah. especially at this, at my point in my career now, I'm being older and they're younger, you know, you're just really excited for what they've got ahead of them and you hope that they can go and do amazing things and, and then you have like a different section, which is the MK Don's boys that come through the youth team where, you know, everyone sees them at whatever age they get into the first team, but I've known them since 13, 14, or they come up and train with me when they were 15. And, um, you know, I still look out, you know, Callum and George and, uh, you know, obviously Sam's finished now, but there's so many that have been through the system that after games I always check, see how they're doing, you know, you have that kind of relationship where you just sort of... Um, you just hope that they go on to do really well for themselves, and, and they uh, they have a good career, and it's it's nice to see people um, progress and, and and do really well for themselves. It of course would be nice if everyone could stay, but everyone's got their own their own path, and you know, and they get to go their own directions. It's a bit of a pub question, that one, <laughs> really. But um, yeah, I noticed you uh, bumped into Stuart Murdoch at Morecambe. That was nice, and I think Aaron Wilbraham was up there as well. Must be nice to. I suppose they made the effort to come and see you because of the. The record, and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been nice to see. Him. Yeah, it was nice. Um, yeah, Stu lives up that way, so I think he was it was in the area, so it was yeah, it's nice. It you know almost comes full circle in a way that that he sort of gave my debut twenty years ago, and then he was there um, as I played. Yeah, as I equaled the record, so it was nice and um, nice memories, nice people. Um, Albie as well, like big part of the club and um, big part of the change room. And, you know, it's nice to to bump into these faces now as you sort of go around the grounds. A lot of boys now moved into different different fields, agents or coaches and stuff. It's nice to sort of bump into them again. In those games, are you still learning in football? Are you still learning, picking up things at the training ground? And also, double question, really: How could you? How have you adapted your game since game one to game seven seven one? Has there been? Have you sort of worked on that? Have you realised that I can't do what I did when I was 18, but I'm going to do this? Or did it just come naturally? So, but again, are you still learning? Yeah, you, yeah you, you've always, you know, a day after game, I watch my clips, um, go through what I've done, did I miss any passes, did I get in the right positions, am I doing what's been asked? You know, it's always a constant, mm-hmm. constant learning. The game's constantly changing, managers are asking different things of you, and um, it is always constant, constant learning. There's always even at my age, there's always things that you can improve and, and be better at. Um, and then, just regard, I think, naturally, as you get older, I've always been quite composed on the ball, which has always been kind of one of my strengths, that I'm, I'm okay on the ball. Um, and the more styles have changed, it sort of, sometimes it suits me more, sometimes less, and um, I just feel like I've had more understanding of patterns now, more of an influence. It's just sort of changed my game, where when you're younger, I was never... You know, overly athletic anyway it wasn't never been one of my strengths so it's not something that you lose your pace or you lose your that side of your game you have to change I've never really had that so it's just been more of a case of just becoming more efficient at what I do and um, making the decisions more more often than not and I think 
moving in from left back to centre centre half has has suited me um, massively. And as we touched on earlier about the luck, you know, yeah. four to three has come at a perfect time in my career, and it, and it, it suited me really well. And um, yeah, if it was a three a little bit earlier, then yeah, it might have been different when I was younger. Yeah. And um, great thing is you mentioned about football, so it's about the next game. Um, good little bit of form in Don's it in form at the right time at the moment. This 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 is your story is not over and this season's not over by a long shot, is it? No, we're we're um we're pleased, we're quietly pleased, you know, we sort of under the radar a little bit and um as you said since Gaff has come in we've we picked up and got some good results against some good teams. Um plus also we're you know, we're playing a style of football that I think it's more attractive and and works, you know. Ultimately, that's what, that's what it is. You know, it's about winning games, and I think you know we've, we've sort of found a way of, of doing that at the moment. And um, you know, we know it'll be it'll be tricky. There'll be bumps in the road as we go forward, but I think um, you know we're enjoying what we do now. I think they're starting to show on the pitch, and and hopefully we can keep this one going and um, and see where it takes us. Because we needed it. it wasn't it was a disappointing year last year, and that must have hurt. That, you know, I mean, it hurt a lot of us who've been around for a while. You must be pleased that the club is looking like it's, it's bound straight back. How, how did you deal with the disappointment of last year? Did you just go away for the summer and have the ump and then just come back? I mean, it, it must have hurt, must not it? Yeah, I think it's it was probably my, I'll take probably the lowest point of Milton Keynes' career. I think previous years, it's you know we, we've been batting against it, but it's you know just not had the players or the teams not been good. enough I think after the season before we had and. Um, Obviously, selling the players, which is fine, it's the model of the club, but just, you know, we didn't reinvest it, we didn't, mm-hmm. we didn't sort of uh, build on what we had, you know, from, from being sort of third to being relegated next year is, you know, almost unthinkable, really. And, um, you know, I was, I was disappointed, I was angry for a long part of the summer. And, um, and you know, it, it come in and, and Graham was great, he changed the, the dynamics of the place and, you know, bought a fresh take on things. And, yeah. Ultimately, he signed some very good players as well, um, and you know we, we started the season well, and you know things were, were looking good and was in the right place. And for whatever reason, it just it just fell apart a little bit, and that happens sometimes in football. It's not sometimes it's not um, yeah, yeah, it's not pointing the finger. It, it just it just doesn't it doesn't make him a bad manager. It just for whatever reason it wasn't working here. Um, but yeah, it it can take a bit of as well. I think you know which Grand done really well is that you can have a bit of a hangover sometimes. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of disappointment. Um, Boys want to leave. They want to, you know, mm-hmm. that's not the place they think it was, and you know, you get all this sort of um, detachment from the club a little bit. So it's sort of taking its time to ride itself out a little bit, and um, hopefully now it's, you know, maybe even going through another manager. Almost, it sort of feels like it's another fresh start again, and yeah. um, we seem like we're on the back, on the other side of it now. And um, you know, I think from one thing we know is that you know, we, the style is important to MK. Like we, we are. Yeah, the passing it's something that maybe we thought we could come away from but I think it's, it is part of us now it's just t- marrying it up with the winning you know no one wants to be a passing team that loses every week you know we, in the league one we found that as well so it's kind of marrying those two together and and you know hopefully we're, we're, we're back on the right path Any aspirations to get 771 games as a manager? <laughs> I don't know how long enough I don't know uh, no it's a uh, you know, I'm just happy. I'm happy playing. I'm happy uh, learning with the gaffer and the staff. Stuff. You know, shout out to the staff as well. They're, they're amazing in what they do, and you know, it's not just one person. It's a team effort, and you know, I'm just picking it up, trying to absorb as much as I can. I think you know they're really talented. You know, a bunch of people, and it's just sort of you know trying to learn as much as you can from them. I think at last, but really not least, you've had a fantastic uh, relationship with the fans. Uh, and you've heard that, I mean, I think just not only through your uh, your footballing, you know, the way you play, you're constantly high level, always you know, kiss the badge, should we say, but it's, I think um, your stance on the club really as well, look at protecting the club in situations like this and interviews and that. And the, yeah, you, you must be looking to the fans. There is a general, you know, a real common bond between you and the fans, isn't there? Yeah, it's just. Um since I broke in the team, really, like, we was obviously young lads, and I think as young boys, you always get the benefit of the doubt. I think the fans always, you know, they want you to do well, and you know, from the very start, that's been the case. And you know, I think fans always want to see commitment from a player. 
they want to see that you, that you care and that you you have a go. I think they'll accept accept your bad games mm-hmm. if they know that you you're trying your best and that your heart's in the right place. And that's always been the case. And um, as you said, it's always been a pretty positive relationship. Um, I've always tried to be honest when things are bad, and I never try to sh- sugarcoat things. And yeah, it's been great. And they they do these, like amazing things like the banners and yeah, that's right, right. Um, it was amazing. I wasn't wasn't expecting that at all. It was, it was great and. You know, we had the, the orange for Louis Day and the, the yeah. weeks and the stuff like that. So they made it, they make a genuine effort for me, which was you know very much appreciated. And um, and hopefully I can pay them back with you know performances on the pitch and and doing the right things to the club, you know, on and off the pitch. Okay, well it is next day in time, so I'll let you go and get prepared. For the next game, thanks for taking the time and thank you for seven hundred and seventy-one days. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Yeah. So.